Today we're going to be making this gorgeous little chick sitting in his little egg. So stay tuned. Hi everyone, Kaz here and today's project is something for Easter. And it's a cutie little thing, so off we go. We are going to need um, some yellow yarn and I'm using King Cole's Tinsel Chunky. It's a rather fuzzy wuzzy yellow yarn. Some bog standard yellow DK yarn from my stash. And some white Aran yarn, which we're going to use for the bottom of the project. So off we go. You're also going to need some safety eyes and safety noses. And I'll put a link in the description below as to where I got these from. Scissors and sewing thread, don't worry, it's not too much sewing at all. And some coloured felts. Uh, orange would be better than the yellow, but I'm working with what I've got at the moment. And maybe a little bow if you'd like to finish off with something cute. First we need to make the base of our project and we're going to cast on, as normal, over, under, over, under, all the way around. I'm going to zero our clock. And we're going to do 60 rows and cast off. Row 60, cut our yarn and cast off as normal. First piece done, stretch it out and we'll put this to one side and we'll work on the next part of our project. Next we're going to work on the body of our little chick. So we're going to start with our tinsley tinsley yarn. Well it's a tinsley fuzzy yarn and you can see it's got long fur and it goes through my Addy fine. So we're going to cast on as normal, over and over and over. Zero the clock. And for the whole body, it's going to be 40 rows, but we're going to split that into 25 rows of the fuzzy yarn and 15 rows of the normal plain DK, which will be the liner backer. So it'll, it's a little bit more economical to do it that way and adds a little bit more substance to the liner as well. So off we go, 25 rows. Cut our yarn as usual, do a yarn change as normal, over to our lemon. Oh, sticky fingers. And we're going to crank now till we get to 40, so that's 15 rows of the liner colour. And don't forget as you come around to put a knot in there. So I'm going to crank around now to 40 rows and cast off. And that's the body of our chick done, so we'll move on now to the head. Moving on to the head, exactly the same system, we're going to do some rows in the fuzzy yellow and some rows in the plain yellow. And it's 20 rows all together. Casting on as normal. Zero our clock. And we're going to do 13 rows in the fuzzy yellow. And my machine's noisy and seven rows in our liner lemon DK.
down to my head done. And now we'll move on to the last two pieces of knitting, which will be our little wings. And the wings for our project are very, very simple. Cast on, eight rows, cast off, and do that twice. So I'll cast off now, do the other wing, and we'll come back with the next stage. See you shortly. And on with the assembly. We start with the egg, and as usual, all we do is just let make a small beanie shape. So gather it together. Gather the one end. Gather the other end. I'll tie that together and put a few stitches in, but that's what we end up with, is our little egg cup shape. All right, so that's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Part one is our little egg cup done already. Next stage is the little chick's body. Now with this fuzzy yarn, you'll find that the outside is yeah, kind of fuzzy, but the, all the fuzziness is on the inside. All right, so we're gonna use that side so we have to remember to tighten our join there. And that will disappear inside now when we fold it up. So I'm just going to trim that off. And we do the same as we do when we're assembling a beanie. Stretch our work out. Remember this is going to be the cheeky, cheeky body. And we do exactly the same thing. Basically make a little beanie. Watch when you're tugging this stuff, it's quite delicate and it does snag sometimes. You don't have to use this fuzzy yarn, of course you can just ordinary, um, you can use an ordinary iron weight yarn or even ribbon yarn. Ribbon yarn is quite nice actually. That goes through my machine as well because I know that because I have another pattern coming up very shortly and I have to say I am quite pleased with it. I think you will be too because it is cute. So stay tuned and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you know when a new video is uploaded because I've got lots and lots coming through at the moment. My head is swimming with ideas. And because I'm talking, I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing. So. Make a little beanie cup shape as we did. And we'll tie that together. And as you can see, the reason for using the DK liner is because it's it's just easier, really, than having all the fuzz everywhere. And it's a little bit more economical on a more expensive yarn. Especially when it's not going to be seen. So once the cup shape is all done and sealed off and our ends hidden inside, we're going to get a little bit of scrap yarn. I'll cut a piece off your yarn ball. And we're going to run a pull thread along the top of here just so that we can pull it in I'm not too fussy when I'm when I'm doing this I'm just following the line of where the normal yarn meets the fuzzy wuzzy yarn and then we're going to stuff the little chickie's body So there's our chick body now completely done and ready for stuffing and we'll move on and do the head in exactly the same way as we did the body. Moving on to the head of the chick, I'm going to remember now to tighten up my join here between the two different yarns. I'll just snip that off because we can hide that inside now, to one side. And exactly the same as we've done already. Cinch one end. And if we can find the tail of this fuzzy stuff. And like I said, be careful with this. It does snag, all right? So it's a case of, of easing it through until you get it to gather and then it will gather through. Almost there. Tight 
tie it to seal it. Trim off and thread through the tails into the inside of our work. Once the little head is formed into a cup shape and you stretch it out a little bit, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the chickie's body and run a little pull cord through. I'm not being too fussy when I do mine. As long as it gathers in, it will do the job fine. And I'm following the line just in between the plain DK yarn and the fuzzy yarn. That's another reason for having um, a change in yarns because it's visually easy then to see where you are on the border between the two, between the liner and the outside of the project. There we go, that one's done. Put that to one side and I'll grab a wing. Now with the wings, these are very small, okay, so they're kind of twiddly-widdly. But again, stretch them out. I've not tried upsizing this onto a 40 pin or a 46, 48, but I'm sure you could just add a few rows onto each one and end up with a really large chick and a really large egg. But that's your choice. If that's what you'd like to do, I'd love to see it. Let me know. Show me. So, gather one end in. We're going to gather one end in all the way, like a beanie top. And like I said, be careful with this stuff. It is um, terrible to catch on the, on the stitches as you're gathering in, so you have to kind of work it around a little bit while you're gathering it in. Mine seems to be a little stuck at the moment. Let's try the other side. Because one side is gathered all the way in. And the other side only partially. So there we are, this side is going in much easier. So we'll use that as our fully closed side. And this side, which is giving me a little bit of trouble, I might be the same for you as well. So you only partially close it. And as you'll find, when it's partially closed, it goes into a, like a little kidney bean shape. And that's the shape we're looking for. Okay, so only partially seal this one. It's very hard to show you the, the seam line there, but you've got, because it's partially closed, you get a natural curve, and that's what we want. I've sealed up the one end exactly the same as sealing a beanie up, so I've just put a few stitches in there. And the beauty of this yarn is you can hide stitches in there easily because of the fuzz. You don't have to be overly careful with your stitches. Fantastic, I love it. So, it's difficult to show you, but there is a curve there. I've not pulled it in tightly to make a ball, okay? So it's like half pulled in on that seam, and you can see it pulls it around. Can you see it pulling, pulling it top and bottom there into like a kidney bean shape, okay? So stop there then, and just put a few stitches all the way along, just to seal that together. Hopefully I'm catching both ends because it is quite tricky to see this when it's all fuzzy buzzy. But he's a chick, isn't he? He's newly out of his egg and he's excited. And boy, does he look excited. So there we go with that one. So now that's stitched up, I'm leaving the tail on there because we can use that then to stitch the wing onto our baby chick. So like I said before, I'm gonna pop on now and do the other wing off camera not to bore you guys too much but as you can see now that's got a kind of kidney bean shape 
totally seal the one end exactly like a beanie, pull it right in so there's no hole at all, put some stitches in it. This one, partially pull that end in and you'll get what looks like a small kidney bean shape, which is going to be our little chicky wing. Okay, so a few stitches in there and leave the long end on so we can use it later. The next step is completely optional, but I quite like the effect myself. And it's the effect of the jagged edges of the shell once the little chick emerges. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've measured the edge of, of mine roughly here, and it's roughly four inches with a little bit of stretch. I've stretched it a little. And roughly four centimetres is there. Very ad hoc here I am. I haven't got a pencil with me, so I'm going to cut down there using my eye, because it doesn't really matter, it's a jagged edge after all, so I'm going to cut uh, two lots. Oh, my dogs are off. Wouldn't be the same without them, would it, people? <laughs> Seagulls went over, I think that's what started them off. So we've got two lengths there of roughly four centimetres wide, and what we're going to do now is just cut a jagged edge um, on them, so I'm just going to chop away and cut a jagged edge like that and keep these little bits because you never know when you need a, a triangle in white felt. Seriously, you don't. Um, so, all the way along, ad hoc little triangles all the way along. There we go, let me keep those. So that's our jagged edge done for our eggshell and again that's completely optional, you don't have to do it, it's just something that I added because I quite like the idea but again you can leave that out no problem. Next step is to cut the beak out, as you can see this is the one that I cut out for my prototype and it is about four and a half centimetres long uh, by about two centimetres wide so I'm going to roughly mark that and again I'm working against myself here so two two centimeters there and roughly four and a half centimeters there I'm very scientific with my measurements not um, there we go off we and there's our little four and a half centimeter by two centimeter triangle or soon to be triangle. So fold it there. Roughly we kind of know where the middle is. And I'm eyeballing it and I'm going to cut there and there. Move our little excess bits to one side because you never know when you need a bit. And that's our little cheeky beak. It's a little diamond, okay? Cheep cheep. And I added a very, very small little pink tongue. Now, the only pink I've got is this really, really bright pink. Preferably, I'd like a paler pink, but I'm going to work with what I've got. And I'm just eyeballing a tiny little piece like that. Tiny little triangle. Which is going to sit inside there. Might be a little big. I'll roughly measure that for you now. And it's roughly a centimetre by a centimetre and a half or thereabouts. Go, and I'm going to just eyeball a little curve in it like that and that's very rough so I'll even that up a little bit probably made it a little bit narrower as well so that's going to be our little cheeky tongue these little bits out of the way and with a hot glue gun, against the seam there, just a little bit of glue, and pop that tongue in there. So when you attach your tongue then in your little cheeky beak, he'll look as if he's got a little tongue wiggling back and forth calling for his breakfast. So next I'm going to attach my little jagged edge around the inside of my egg cup shape here. Now I'm going to use the hot glue gun to do that but you can stitch it on if you prefer. 
I'm stretching mine slightly to allow room for the chick to fit in once he's all fully stuffed. He's going to be a little pudding, okay? I've glued the first little part on. And I'm just stretching and gluing. Put a centimetre into the egg. I'm not gluing all the way around, just a couple of little spots here and there. Stretching my project a bit as I go. So there'll be room for our little chick to fit in. Cut it then where we don't need the excess. There we are, all glued around. Like I said, you can bend a few of these over if you'd like to and glue them down on the opposite side, but I'm going to leave mine sticking up while they set for a moment, okay? Put that to one side and we move on to the beak. And all it is with this, with our little pink tongue, it's a little blob of glue on the back there. Pop him in the middle. And let him set. There's the little beak with his tongue inside. Leave that set for a few minutes. So now that our little tongue is set in there, as you can tell, this isn't going to stay closed. It's going to continuously flop open. So, fold it in half, and this is where you need to put some thread into a needle. And just put a few stitches across the back in order to keep this from opening all the time. Which will spoil the look of our chick. So just a few artog stitches across the back. I've got to be super careful or anything with them. But it will keep the beak a little more closed. So that's all we want. Snip that off. And then you can see the beak is kind of closed. So when we stick it onto our little beaky, beaky guy, we've got a little bit more control about how much yapping he's doing to his mother for food. And now on to our little fuzzy body of our chick. And we're going to stuff him, so have your stuffing ready, which I've got to the side here. I'll just even it out a little bit. And we're just going to pop some stuffing in his little body. You don't need too much. He's only just been born. So I've got a little wadge in there. Grab a little bit more. So stuff it to however you think it's going to be right for you. And then we grab our drawstring that we sewed around the edge earlier. And we pull him in like that and pull him tight. So we end up with a little fuzzy ball. So tie that off. Nice and tight. Good strong knots there. Now then, keep the string. Don't cut that off. We need to keep the length. We need to keep the length, okay? And we move on to the head. So there's his body, which is basically a pom-pom with a string on it, okay? So there's our chicky body. Move on to chicky head. Now, before we do what we did with the body and stuff it and all the rest of it, we need to find out where we're going to stick our eyes. Now, I have got a set of eyes and noses, like I showed you before, these here. Um, I bought them off Amazon, they're a kit, they're reasonable enough, quite good value really. And I've chosen just two little black eyes for my little bird. Now positioning these can be a little bit tricky um, because we've not stuffed him yet. So we're going to have to kind of do this by eye, excuse the, excuse the pun. So let's just try and put one eye in. I'm just trying to figure out how 
stuffed he's going to be, where his eyes are going to lie. So we stretch him out a little bit because he's only little. I'm going to put one eye in there, one eye in there like that. Pop a thingamajig on the, on the back. Now I'm trying to figure out where the other eye is going to go so he doesn't end up looking squiffy is the problem. <laughs> so if I end up with a squiffy chick, all right, he's, he's going to be just as beautiful, all right. Yes, I think we'll have him a little bit further apart. What do you think? And then when we attach his little beaky, he's going to be really, really cute. There he, oh, there he is. See? He's going to be really, really cute. So I have opted to put my eyes, let's measure a few people, uh, four centimetres apart. Four centimetres seems to crop up quite a lot in this project. If we look at the back, we can count rows up, can't we? That's a good good tip, look. So we've got from you know, one, two, three, four roughly, I'd say four or five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think that's about right. So I'm going to just go for it and put the other oop, holding piece on. So we have two little safety eyes on our little chick and as you can see by there now where we gathered it in some of the furs got caught so just tease it out there we go when you're on a um, perfect tease that out if you get a little bit caught in where you gathered it up so the same again now tiny little bit of stuffing because he's only a tiny little newborn chick so you can pop a little bit of stuffing in his head just a tiny little ball and then we'll gather up that drawstring so again with the other one leave the string on leave a length on there because we're going to use that in a minute so there's our little chick and his eyes are reasonably, reasonably good. So it was about two and a half inches up from when you turn it inside out, two and a half centimetres, sorry, up and they're four centimetres apart. Okay, so there he is. There's our little fuzzy wuzzy chick. Okay, so that's his head. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the body part with the string and the head part with the string and we're just going to tie them together. No sewing. tie it together and make sure when you choose your yarn to do that running stitch with to pull these pieces together you choose something strong I think I should have gone with something a bit stronger than this one because it is just a DK I would have gone with an iron if I'd um, thought about it sooner so <clears throat> wrap it around a few times to give him a little bit of a bobbly neck which is what I want to go for with this one rather than a, a stiff neck chick and then there we go. There he is, little fuzzy, fuzzy little chick. And you can turn his head a little bit because he's got a kind of a little swivelly neck, all right? So that's the idea of tying it together, is to give him a little bit of a... Oh, you can point him that way. Oh, you can point him that way. Well, he's looking for his mammy. And of course, you don't have to put him in the egg at this stage. I mean, you've got a lovely little Easter chick. You can add a little bit of felty feet on there or if you crochet you can crochet some little chicky feet and you've got standalone cute little easter chick so as usual with our ends here we're going to thread them in and hide them inside the body of our little guy or little girl because when they're first born you can't really tell for a while perfect. Now as I've got the hot glue gun ready to go we're going to attach his beak. So you could sew it on if you wanted to and I'm going to opt to just pop a little bit of glue on there 
So part those furry bits and find where you want to put his his beak like that. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the edge of that there like that. Hot glue. And then I'm going to position it facing upwards a little bit so we can hide it. Hide that glue and squash it down then. There we go. Leave that set for a little bit. And we'll grab the wings. Now if you remember, we've got two kidney shaped little wings here. One side was totally sealed up like a beanie top and the other one was partially um, sealed up which leaves you with a little C shape and you just stitched along there okay to seal that up and we've left that on there so that we can sew on our wings onto our little cheeky body so I'm looking for my other needle now so I prefer my metal needle to my Addy needle for this so while those are setting now we'll have a left and a right so we'll have one kidney shape going that way and one kidney shape going that way. So put a left and a right then, okay? So we're going to put the left one there and the right one there. Now we're going to just pop in there. I'm going to move that up to the top of the wing from the side. I'm going to just put a few stitches in to attach it at the top. And the beauty of this yarn is you haven't got to be super careful about your stitches because it's so fuzzy it hides a multitude of sins. But just a few good stitches in there to anchor that in place. So our little chick when he's ready to fly, he's got the necessary equipment. And there he is, with his one little flappy wing. Oh, he is so cute. So I'm going to sew the other one on now. Make sure they're matching up, or thereabouts. He's not going to fly if he's got a wonky wing. And isn't he a happy looking little fella? And who wouldn't be? With his bobbly little head. Say, Yay! I'm new to the world. Hello world! <laughs> yes, I'm bonkers. I know. Nearly there guys. We're nearly there. Okay, with our happy little Easter chickie. Looking super happy. With his little wings attached. We're going to pop him in his egg. Now, this is the egg we've made. Now, you've got an option with the egg of what you do with it. Now, you can stuff it and pop your chicky in it. Okay? And either hot glue him in or sew around and secure him in that way. Or you can opt for what I'm going to opt for, which is I'm going to use like a vending machine cup here. Or you can use a yogurt pot or something like that. And this is uh, a really good size for this project. You can hot glue it into place to hold it, to stop it from moving around. And what I'm going to do is I've got a little bag of sweeties here. Little chocolate uh, bonbons. I'm going to pop those in the bottom. So if you were given these as an Easter gift, you could have little sweeties in the bottom there. Or a little present or something like that for Easter. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for mine, but feel free to stuff yours, put different sweeties in there, something like that. So that's a complete option up to you. That, I find, is a, a good, quick and easy option, and we're recycling as well the plastic cups. And there's a little gift in there. What's, what's, 
Ooh, couldn't be a, couldn't be better. And we get our happy little chick chick, and we pop him in his nest. And there he is. There's our little chick. Here's his little egg. Isn't he cute? Now I have made up a bowl ready, and it's an Easter Easter type ribbon bow with bunny rabbits and Easter eggs on it and that kind of thing. And you could pop that on the front like that. So I'm going to get my hot glue gun. And I'm going to put a little bob of glue on the back of that bow. And I'm going to pop it just off centre there. And I would call that... I would call that done. What do you think? Do you think he's cute? I think he's really cute. Um, I don't know what to call him yet. I don't know whether he's a girl or a boy. I think I'm just going to call him Chicky. Thanks so much for tuning in today. It's lovely to have you with me again. And Chicky Chicky is so happy to be new to the world and super happy. So if you like this project, please like, comment, share and subscribe. To have you subscribing to me is absolutely fantastic. And if you find my patterns are of use to you, especially in a monetary form, please consider making a donation to an animal charity or a local animal shelter near you because everybody's struggling for income at the moment and every penny counts, doesn't it, Chicky? Yes, it does. So I'll see you next time guys and don't forget to hit that bell icon because I've got more patterns coming up which I'm sure you're going to love. See you next time. Say goodbye Chicky. Bye. I think I'm nuts.